Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the one Sing Smart Piano or Keyboard that can teach you how to play and sing along at the same time using a optional companion app available for both iOS or Android. You can use it like a regular electronic piano just by playing yourself, placing any sheet music on top, or again, you can connect it to your phone and the keys underneath will light up with a red light to indicate where you should place your fingers in order to learn certain tracks as well as sing along and record even using their built-in app. You can have the camera camera face you if you're using the front facing one on your device and save those recordings for viewing back as well as even sharing or live streaming. So a pretty neat idea for aspiring musicians that want to also learn how to play the keyboard or piano. The app is also quite versatile in the sense that when you're selecting a song you can choose between different levels of difficulty. For instance level one is only using your left hand and so the right hand as well as some of the melodic changes will be handled by the piano itself, you just have to follow along with certain lighted keys really as just a rhythm more than anything else until progressively you'll have to use both of your hands on level 3 and then by levels 4 and 5 you have to handle everything yourself claiming to make the process of learning how to play much easier without necessarily having to pay for expensive lessons, one-on-ones. Their slogan here is anyone can play and you can do it at the comfort of your own house or room. And some of you guys may recall that a while back we checked out another smart piano or keyboard from a Xiaomi Eagle system brand called Popu Piano, but by contrast, the One Sing is much more of a full-sized unit, as you can tell they're side by side. The Popu Piano is more like a toy because it is extremely compact, but also missing a lot more keys and feeling a bit more cramped if you're doing more serious playing for longer durations. So this is going to feel a lot more similar to a regular full-size piano and, again, slightly better ergonomics as you're actually playing. That being said, it will be also, of course, taking up a little bit more space. Ultimately, though, at around seven pounds, because the housing is primarily made out of polycarbonate plastic, it's still not too heavy. So if you wanted to move it across a different room, putting it into the back seat of a car, it's still doable. Although it isn't designed to fit into your backpack per se. There's three different colors, including this red one that looks quite vibrant. You can also pick between a more classic white, very clean, or black. It connects to the app via Bluetooth, but you can also use a USB MIDI connection mode instead if you want to use it as a wired connection. In addition, the batteries inside, if you are popping in AA cells, can last upwards of six hours or you can bring along a power bank and just plug it in using a standard USB Type-C cable. And like most electronic pianos, you can also choose between other sounds and tones. You can simulate string instrument sounds like guitars, in addition to violins, as well as drums, if you want to choose that instead as you experiment and create your music. But some of their previous offerings were really just designed at teaching you kind of sheet music and the fundamentals of really just piano playing. This one adds that singing component, so more of the music within the app that we'll see in a moment are geared towards kind of pop, jazz, R&B, popular songs that you can sing along to and record, which I do think makes it a little bit more fun and interactive, almost like a next level karaoke unit. So inside the packaging, you have access to a quick start guide as well as a aforementioned USB type C cable. Plus there is a wall adapter, but you can also power it using any standard power bank. The app works on both phones as well as tablets, which might actually be a little bit more practical since this is a slightly larger piano. You can see it more easily by placing it onto the stand. And the stand, by the way, is also a removable part. So it just can be popped off like so using these two grooves. And also when you're playing back a song, you can also choose your key. So if it's a little bit too high by default or too low, depending on your voice, what your vocal range is, you're able to shift it higher or lower. So it's customizable. It's not just stuck on one track. And similarly, if you don't like the instrumentals or the way that the track is arranged, you can also select a couple of other styles as well. Again, we'll see that more clearly once we transition into checking out the app, but it also means you're not stuck with one instrumental that you don't like. You can make it more jazzy, you can make it more kind of pop, so on and so forth. And again, the speed you can control as well in terms of tempo, slowing it down, making it faster, and it goes along with how fast you are playing. Again, more versatile than a pre-recorded karaoke track that is always at the set tempo and you have to kind of keep up, which may not feel always natural depending on how you want to sing a particular song. Some final specs here at a glance. Those are the specific dimensions. In addition to having, again, 61 red LEDs underneath using pretty up-to-date Bluetooth 5.0. And although it does have built-in stereo speakers on both the left as well as the right, you can also plug in a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if 
preferred. For instance, if you want a more private practice session, you can just plug in your own headphones or onto larger speakers if you want to amplify it when performing on a larger stage. Now up top here you'll also find both the power key, which has a LED indication light, as well as a volume dial. So you can tell that if we turn up the volume, the speakers will also progressively get louder and louder. And again, these are pressure sensitive keys, meaning the harder you press, also the louder it will get. But that maximum level is just set by the dial over here. For instance, this is a very light tap versus a harder tap. You can hear the volume also get progressively louder. So it feels pretty similar in that regard to a real piano. That is one difference compared to cheaper electric keyboards often don't sound as natural or realistic because regardless of how hard you're pressing, it's always coming at the same volume level. It's a bit more robotic. On here, you can get a little bit more emotive playing via the pressure sensitive keys. That being said, one accessory that isn't bundled in the default packaging would be a foot pedal. So if you want to sustain your notes, dragging it out for longer, then you may have to look into accessories in the future. That being said, for most pop songs, particularly in the kind of the sing-along style, you should be probably fine. And just like the pop you piano that we touched on earlier, this is a piano itself in terms of the bass that you're getting. In other words, you'll want to set it down onto a flat surface when you're playing, ideally maybe a table for instance, although I suppose a bed or even on the floor should be fine as well. Just find somewhere that you are comfortable in that doesn't really wobble around. It doesn't come with a kickstand or feet, however. Perhaps that could be an optional accessory that they bring out in a future revision. Alright, so on the very back of the piano here, you'll also find the I.O., which is inclusive of the aforementioned USB port if you want to use it as a wired MIDI for creating your own music, as well as the USB Type-C for power, charging if you don't want to use four AA batteries. There's also a, again, 3.5mm headphone jack. So on the rear, you'll find the soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around onto a table or surface, along with the compartment for inserting the optional batteries. So there's really no assembly required, just taking it out of the cardboard box and you're pretty much ready to use it. Overall, presented quite nicely. Let's take a closer look at the app next. And now with the app open, we can find the Sing Piano. And after just a split second, we should be then paired. You'll hear the chime there from the piano speakers. From this point, you can also adjust some of the piano settings. For instance, if you want to change the volume higher or lower using your phone as a remote control, as well as what type of instrument you're trying to imitate. For instance, this is the natural sound. Alternatively, here is the electric grand piano. So a little bit more bright sounding. so on and so forth. Some other instrumental sounds that you can select, this one called Celestia, organ and accordion, here's a harmonica, this one is a wood drum, and then string instruments including a guitar, here's a violin, versus something like a cello, a trumpet, as well as saxophone, clarinet, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. There are plenty of different instruments that you're able to find. Here's also a flute. Even some synth effects, such as from the 80s, can be found here as well. In fact, some ones are even inspired by different nature sounds, including descriptive labels like crystal, drops of water and even some ethnic instruments. For instance, we play back a few more from various countries, and more percussion instruments like drums that give you some rhythm without necessarily any melody. Some other special sounds that you get include even birds, as well as helicopter applause. So if you really wanted to create your own music, you can play around with more irregular sounds. Other controls, including splitting it into two different regions, maybe for the left hand versus the right hand as you are practicing. And you could also find more sound settings here, including sustaining some of your notes automatically. So it's going to drag it out for just a little bit longer, but you can turn it off if you want it to be 
more short and abrupt. You can even choose different types of reverb effects. For instance, you want to sound like it's bouncing off of an opera hall versus a church to make the echo effect maybe stronger or weaker. And the final tab allows you to turn on this toggle, which will make the keyboard compatible with third-party apps such as GarageBand. It claims to be the world's first Apple M5 certified device that can be used as a MIDI input and output for, again, more serious music production purposes. And even from the app, you can also choose the OTG cable method instead. So jumping back, we can now see the different tracks that you're able to practice or sing along to, separated by various genres here on the left. For example, under country, this is a sample of what songs you can find, but it seems like they are growing and we'll be adding different tracks on on a weekly basis, as you can tell there. And some of the new songs that were added in the past week include the ones shown here, as well as what types of songs are currently trending in the past week by other players. Going through some of the other categories here, just to serve as an example, here would be jazz. The list might be a little bit smaller in this genre, so hopefully that continues to expand in the future. Pop, though, is definitely the biggest bucket. We have most of the mainstream artists, including Adele, as well as Lana Del Rey, Ed Sheeran, so on and so forth that you can see available here, Taylor Swift, to practice or sing along to. And the list here, again, continues to go down, even some K-pop artists like Blackpink here as well. And then under R&B, you can find tracks like these, just to serve as an example. And otherwise, further scrolling down into rock, you can also find more classics here from Elvis, The Beatles, The Eagles, Animals, Simon Garfunkel, Aerosmith, Elton John as well. And then finally, under traditional, you can find tracks here including I Dreamed a Dream, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, maybe from musicals, or there are less pop-related tracks. So it's a pretty decent sampling of songs, most of the popular ones. I think you're bound to find a couple of artists that you're interested in. But just like the Pop You Piano app, again, if you're looking at more niche songs or music from smaller artists, or even a larger artist may not have their full discography in the app just yet. The purposes of just singing along, karaoke, practicing, I think it still is a sufficient selection that you can get some entertainment out of and you're bound to find at least a couple of tracks or genres that you're interested in. Mostly songs here which have had an imprint on popular culture you can reference over here. Alternatively, you can search for specific artists as well as songs using the universal bar up top. So just to serve as demonstration, let's just click on a song here and you'll see it loads in just a split second. It's not too slow. And then you'll see the lyrics that you can scroll down to kind of read and practice with as well as listen. giving you a snippet of what the current key is, so you can position your voice to sing accordingly, but you can also again change the key, making it higher or lower. so on and so forth. And you can also tap once again to access. Options include changing the style of the instrumentals, so it's more re relaxing for instance, slightly more complicated more relaxing, more energetic, fitting different types of tones based on what you prefer as you are singing along. You can also make the track slower or faster by changing the speed, aka the beats per minute, to increase, for instance, and also listen. The piano button down below here can also be pressed to kind of pull up a virtual display of where that first note will be as you are playing along, giving you another indicator as you are practicing. But as you can tell here, the keys underneath are illuminated there in red. So as you are pressing down below, the music there will then start, telling you to then tap again to continue the track. Last but not least, there's also a record button up top here, which will open up the camera, allowing you to record yourself with either the rear or front facing cameras. So continuing along here, you can see that again, the lights underneath here are pretty visible. Even if there's a bit of light in the room around you, you can still make it out without too many issues. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Grace that saw 
God, my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve. Oh, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are when the pleasant sun is gone when he nothing shines upon then you show your little light Twinkle, twinkle all the night Twinkle, twinkle little star How I wonder what you are Oh, holy night The stars are bright shining it is a night of our dear Savior's birth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new Glorious morn, oh night, when Christ was born, oh holy night, oh night divine. And if you're trying to learn some piano pieces without singing, they also have a more conventional piano app, which includes some more courses for mastering the basics of piano playing, as well as more of a gamification aspect, where similar to Guitar Hero, you're able to play along and get a score telling you how accurate you were. And so in the regular piano app, we have three tiles, including one for song. So this is still playing back some pop songs, but the difference is it doesn't really have the recording function as part of the kind of sing-along that we get in the dedicated singing app. But you can potentially find some more artists on here since this app has been around for a little bit longer. And perhaps more importantly, you can also find some more classic songs designed for piano. Case in point here is for Elise that you can pull up, again favorite, and see the actual score here up above as you're playing along, and also the key is still illuminating on the keyboard where you're supposed to be pressing to play. You can also listen to a kind of preview plus select between using both hands or only left hand or right hand to also change the difficulty, remaining pretty intuitive to use. Tapping on settings, you can even turn the light on or off once you've mastered a song. Here's also one example of the black keys here also lighting up with the red LED underneath. And one difference compared to the Seeing app is there are a few more notations when you are playing piano pieces that tells you how you should be shifting around with the fingers. And that same layout is used for other pop songs within the piano app as well. So for instance, here's Teenage Dream by Katy Perry, but as you can tell, you're seeing the full score, providing a slightly more pro layout, I would say, including other soundtracks from, again, popular culture, like the Pokemon theme can be found here as well, a slightly wider catalog. Here's also a quick look at the game mode, and you can actually select between different tiles just by using the keyboard lights here, moving up and down through the carousel, which is kind of fun, or you can use the touchscreen, of course. And now we'll proceed through a tutorial, again quite similar to Guitar Hero, pressing the keys, the lighted regions with your hands when it flashes down. Even telling us the correct finger that we should be using to press on the key. 
assigning you a score at the end out of 100. And finally, for the chords section, it's just a little bit more structured, teaching you certain chords, as well as first playing maybe with your right hand in the C position, mastering one song as a demo before moving into a next lesson with your left hand, and then eventually combining both hands together, changing hands, shifting, with increasing complexity as well. So not bad in terms of, again, getting you to master some of the basics to become more fluid, being able to eventually play back more complex pieces more easily as well. Courses themselves are relatively easy to follow along. The UI also felt pretty smooth and intuitive. When there are two black keys, all the white keys to the left are C notes. Sit down facing the center of the keyboard. And so it kind of starts off by telling us where the middle C position is, where we should be sitting with some of the interactive videos inside of the course. So you can then practice along before passing and also teaching you a bit more about how to read the sheet music progressively. So you don't have to only rely on the lights as you become more advanced. And eventually culminating in a song as you master some of the contents within a lesson, it's a pretty rewarding process and actually quite fun, making the process of learning the piano just seem a little bit more intuitive. Again, if you are an aspiring singer, enjoy karaoke, or just want to challenge yourself to kind of sing and play at the same time, that multitasking dexterity can also improve your kind of hand-eye coordination, just like other smart instruments that we've covered in the past, whether it's been ukuleles, guitars, with fretboards containing those LEDs, helping guide your fingers along as you are mastering the instrument. So if interested, you can check out more details in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That has been the One Sing Smart Piano.